buddy. Training camp 2023. I know, I know you saw my guy Diami. started it with, oh, I just saw you start with Sam Howell. I missed Diami. Oh, oh, hey, start with the Tar Heels and end with the Tar Heels. Oh Let's go. <laughs> Yo, so training camp is here. And, and personally, you talked about this before. The fans are back. We're talking – one of the things that has been huge for us in Washington is not having that home field advantage, not wanting – we love our team, and we some of us casually watch, but we have not been really able to support them because of the, the cloud of Dan Snyder over them. Now with the people coming out, there's a product, a good product yeah. on the field. Man, I am excited just because there seems to be a lot more energy at training camp this year. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's been, it's been wonderful. The players are talking all about it. Um, how much, how much excitement there is uh, here. <laughs> uh, Chris just asked us the question. Uh, uh, does a fan petition? Yes. Oh, you know yeah. who that is. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> is, is this, is this going to be Kyle making up names and asking questions? Oh no, no, no. This is Chris oh, from, uh, this is the Vanderbilt guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, my bad. I thought it was Kyle going on as his names and stuff. There's a fan petition to change the name back, but I am yeah. Trey Lance. I've never, I haven't heard that. No, thank you. No, thank you right now for Ch- for Trey Lance. Oh, um, he, he, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Chris, aren't you a, a Titans fan? Keep all three of your quarterbacks. Choose which one of those guys is going to do it. But go ahead. Yeah. No, the, the players are talking how much excitement there is at at training camp and how much the you know the excitement, the vibes, the the cheering. You know, it, it goes really well, and it kind of hypes them up a little bit, especially when it's hot out there. You know, it's August in Ashburn. Ashburn is not a not a cool place. No, um, no, no. You know, this week's a little bit better, I heard, up in your area. But, you know, it's, it's pretty hot out there, so it's helped. But it's been – you know, the, the update – you know, what we've heard from training camp has kind of been what we were anticipating. You know, the defense right now is ahead of the offense, which is not surprising because we got, you know, a new offensive coordinator. It's a new scheme that's being brought in here. We essentially got a rookie quarterback. You essentially have the best four linemen in, on defense. You know, they're not wearing pads. So it, it definitely, you know, is not surprising that the defense is ahead of the offense. Um, and and you know, Sam Howell right now, from what they're saying, is, you know, they're showing he's got a live arm. You know, that he's, yeah. he's real good with some deep throws. He kind of knows where he wants to go with the ball. Um, you know, I thought about last year, you and I, it was this time of the year, we we're like, hey, it's training camp. Don't worry yeah. about the Carson Wentz inaccurate throws. He's just yeah. trying things. Well, that was, we were wrong, you yeah. know, but you're not hearing so much about Sam Howell being completely inaccurate. They're hearing more, a little bit more about how he's got a strong arm. He's willing to push the ball downfield and stuff. So that's exciting, exciting stuff to hear. What was kind of popped out to you? Um, well, obviously I've focused on that and, and I will, I want to temper my expectations. Cause just like Chris said on Monday, Will Levis for the Titans with six of seven, for five touchdowns, it's training camp. Right. But that's my thing. Yes. These passes have been on point. One of the things that I was really focused on, especially with this new offense is we, we talked about him getting his steps, right. Getting his footwork, right. But I wanted him to be hitting, getting those receivers practice makes perfect. So like you said about what Wins did last year, that I did not want to see. I wanted to see Sam with a full off season, and now he's doing. And from what it's, we see, it's looking good. One of the things that I'm excited about with him, though, is that it's the attention, the detail. But he's ready to learn. He's ready to, you know, pick up on what EB is telling him. Rivera, the receivers, yeah, the quarterbacks. Brissett has been helping him out a lot, and that's something that I think in and why for him we need. You know what I mean? Um, another spot I'm looking at a lot is the other side today, his wide receivers. His wide receivers, McLaurin has been catching some nice. You, you talked about my guy, Deami Brown, who's really been – he's taking it upon himself to kind of have a sense of urgency. It, you know, I need to get it together now. You're, no, you're now – you're not the third guy anymore. You're down the fourth, and with, like I said, Bry, uh, Byron Pringle in there, even if they don't, even if they have no intentions of moving Deami Brown down further – you still have somebody that's nipping on your heels that knows the offense, so doesn't have to sit here and learn something new so they can easily put him in. It reminds me of uh, when we had uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick. What did we do? We got Adam Humphreys. In any other situation, we wouldn't have had Adam Humphreys playing, but he was supposed to be good with Fitzpatrick. Unfortunately, Fitzpatrick didn't play that long. So, you know, but my thing is this. And this is this Russell. I like what you're saying. I just hope the team can rally around a new quarterback. Yeah, I think they have. I, I do. 
I think outside of Washington, there's a lot of people saying, oh, Washington have a quarterback. This guy's unproven, yada, yada, yada. Great. Keep saying that. This guy has proven himself in college, and I know that's only college or whatever, but the fact that he got dropped down to fifth, he has taken it upon himself to really up his game. Attention to detail. I They, they did an interview, uh, was it uh, John Kahn did an interview with his quarterback coach, and he said he is so dialed in to the new playbook, to a lot of the things that he's trying, you know, a lot of the nuances and the things he's learning and picking up on and getting close to wide receivers and his linemen, the linemen love him. You know, they're sitting here saying that's our guy. He's a, that's something that I, that I'm like, okay, they'll protect you. They'll, they'll protect you if they like you, you know what I mean? So I love what I'm seeing from him, the wide receivers. I'm loving what I'm seeing. And, uh, but talk to me about the other stuff. Talk to me about the defense. Talk to me about, you know, how we, how we really looking. Yeah, well, you know, obviously the defense being ahead of the offense, as we kind of said it before, but that's no surprise. You know, the, the defensive line's been been pretty tough. Now they, they haven't been wearing pads a whole lot, so it's kind of hard for those offensive linemen to stop a Montez and a Chase and, the, and our yeah. two big defensive tackles come and run at them without, you know, just playing hand games and stuff. Uh, but the, the line has put some good pressure on them, they certainly said, and, and that's made, you know, sometimes Howell's had some trouble out there the last couple of days. But the thing that I've heard, and this is what I was real curious on, is our first round pit. He's been holding his own out there. They talk about his his smarts, his instincts. They talk about his ability to see routes, see concepts, and, and yeah. jump stuff. You know that you know the big question mark with Forbes is his size. And there was a video yesterday where um, one of the wide receivers they were wearing pads so they could be a little more physical. At the top of the route, he shoved him. You know, and turned around to catch the ball. You know, so that's what we're going to need to see is 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 he going to get pushed around a little bit? But yeah. from a you know for from now so far he's been holding his own out there, and that that's pretty good. And what they're talking about is the you know Forbes and BSJ and and Fuller really provide some some opportunities for Jack Del Rio, and then you've got our safeties out there. You know, we've been talking so much in the off season and last year about how we don't have linebackers. Well. Jack Del Rio basically just wants to throw a whole bunch of DBs out there. So basically what we decided to do is say we're going to be good on the defensive line. We're going to be good in the secondary. And that's what that's how our defense is going to work. And I think it's going to provide some flexibility for them. So that's it's kind of exciting to, to see how some of this and to see how Quan Martin's doing and, and Forbes is doing and, and that they can be instant impact players. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um uh, outside, yeah, outside of that, that's secondary has been huge. I've been looking into that. The backfield, my old position, running back. One of the things that I, I really wanted to kind of pick up and see from this is can each of these guys be maybe more of what they're supposed to be? So we know Brian Robinson is a bruiser. One of the things that he, I don't I know if you noticed uh, last week, he had one of the catches of the day. A one hand over his shoulder catch and, you know, was able to release from the defender. That's something I didn't know that was in his game. You know, yeah. we didn't we, we didn't really utilize him because we had, you know, a big a lot of wide receivers and Antonio Gibson. But I think that's something that if he can start with that and get him out into the open, we already know how how much of a bruiser he is. But if we can we can get him into space and, you know, going up against one, maybe one or two guys, he's the first guy is not bringing him down. And then on the flip side, Antonio Gibson. I mean, last year there was a lot of talk, especially around the trade deadline, oh, Gibson wants out. Oh, Washington doesn't want Gibson. I don't feel that way at all. I've always wanted him. Number one, I want that two running back system. But two, Gibson has been the guy that once you put him out in space, Gibson is going to get you. He's going he's gonna to make people miss. But he's a threat out in space. We've yeah. seen they put him at return man last year when we needed it because Dax Millen wasn't getting it done. And right. he opened it up. He's given us 10, 15, you know, maybe even 20 yards better of field position because of what he's able to do. And he makes that defense step back because now they have to pay attention to where he is either in the return game or at, at running back, but now him kind of leaning, and I've heard they're kind of talking about him potentially being a third down back and getting him, you know, we know EB loves the screen screen game. We yeah. know he likes to get it out to those running backs quick and get them get uh, going upfield. I can really see 
Antonio Gibson having a big year this year because of how he's going to be utilizing this offense. And, I, and I'm, I'm all for it. I'm, I'm excited about it. Me too. Me too. I love the fact that they want to get both those running backs involved in the, in the, in the passing game. And just to, you know, so someone like Brian Robinson doesn't seem so one dimensional. So I'm, I'm yeah. thrilled with that. And you, you said it, the, the, the star of training camp right now is EB. I mean, he pushes players. I even heard today he yes. yelled at some refs. Like he is yep. all about a tempo and, <laughs> and some refs were out there and they were trying to explain what they called. He was like, we got it. Get out of our way. Let us go. <laughs> you know, yes. he doesn't want to waste any time out there. And I love that. I love that urgency that he's saying. And I think I heard on, on one of the, maybe the first days with pads, <coughs> excuse me, he didn't like what the offense was doing or the timing. He was like, get off the field. Yes. Like, bring me a right. new set, you know? And it's like, so, you know, they, they always use that model. You, you practice, you know, you, how you practice is going to turn into how, how you play stuff. I'm kind yeah. of uh, messing that up right now. But it's like I love the fact that he's making them practice with a sense of urgency. And, and you know, it's a long way before week one. It's a long way before week 17, yep. week 18. And <laughs> yep. It matters. But these are some good changes that we've seen out there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Russell was saying, I don't think they use Gibson – uh, to his strengths in the past, hopefully not yeah. anymore. I completely 100% agree. Hundred percent agree. Yes. Yeah, and so that's why we are hoping that with Eric Bieniemy's new offense and you know things that they did in Kansas City, they use those running backs. You yeah. talk about Jer- uh, McKissick. You talk about uh, P- Pacheco. You know what I mean? Those guys might not have been um, household. Not McKissick. McKinnon. Those McKinnon, guys might yeah, not have right. been uh, household names, but look at the Super Bowl. Did that running game started to pick up? They yeah. were able to get back in that game, um, the Chiefs. So EB knows what he's doing. Uh, what's going on, Candy? Saying uh, what's the new name? Right now we're the Commanders. Okay, <laughs> and let's 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 just win. Let's win. <laughs> we discussed that a little earlier. Are they going back to the Redskins? What are they going to change it to? I don't know if we. I don't know if we as fans have it in us to go through that again. Cool. So let's just get a W. Yeah. <laughs> And Johnny D- DMV Commandos, hey, <laughs> we'll see. So, hey, training camp. Any anything else that has caught your eye? I like what you said about EB because I think he's going to be a difference maker. If not for anything else, we mentioned culture earlier. He has put a sense of urgency on this team, and yeah. it's it's not tomorrow, it's not next week, it's right flipping now. Let's get it going. So, I, I love what he's brought to the table, but. Anything else you see in that that's kind of caught your eye? There is, but he's the topic of our our final segment. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Wait, which? Yep. Do you have, do you have it written? No, I do not. Okay. Well, let's talk about Chase Young. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what it – yes, I had it written on the paper. Yes. Go ahead, Will. <laughs> so basically, the question was asked today uh, during some of the DC sports talks. I think Kevin Sheehan had us. What type of production would do you need to see from Chase Young to warrant an extension? And oh, yeah. one of the things they've been, you know, this, this not a star, but what has been noticed at training camp is how Chase is healthy again. He's not wearing a brace on his knee. He's got the uh, quick steps. Uh, one of the things John Kime said was he used to stutter step a lot last year, just basically not showing that that confidence in that knee. But that's gone. He's He's got a strong burst to him again. It's like, oh, this looks like the mm-hmm. 2020 chase that, that was out there. So essentially is, all right, you know, what do you think it's going to take for him? What, what stats? What do you want to see for him to say, we need to franchise you or we need to sign you to an extension? I'll ask you the question. Let's you go first. I mean, if we're going by stats, if for the extension, I need 10 plus. I need 10 plus X. His first year is rookie of the year. They got rookie of the year in 2020. He had what seven and a half sacks. You know, I think he had a, four, a fumble recovery for a touchdown, a forced fumble, that type of stuff. I need more. I need him to be that number one pick. Now, I don't think it's fair that we can just put that on stats because like you said at camp, he he's that energy. You think EB is a little inter- is energetic chase at full health when he's not thinking about his knee. He's that fire. That's the guy that we wanted in here. So I'm saying it has to be 10 seconds. Now for an extension or, or for um, the franchise tag, he, he's got to produce five, six sacks, deflections, tackles for losses need to be high he needs, and, and at the very least, 
he needs to make that offense go the other way. You know what I mean? He runs up field, they come this way, and they reverse field because they, they're so afraid of what he's going to do. We, we need to have the, – they need to have the fear for him <laughs> that they have for uh, seven from heaven in uh, Dallas. Oh, Parsons? Parsons. I was yeah. like, who? Yeah, I know. Yeah. 11 from heaven, that's what it meant. From, but that's what that's one yeah. of the things that I think we need. What are, you, what are your thoughts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm with you where I'm kind of looking at you know you're gonna have to produce, but I think per, produce is kind of a bigger word. Yes, double de, de, double digit sacks is pretty easy to say like oh double digit sacks we should probably keep this guy. But I also think back to the time where like in his rookie season Brian Arakpo had eight sacks and four of them were against the Raiders in one game. Yeah. You right. know, so you what what happened the other 15 games? You had four sacks. That's not that right. great of a season. You know, so you got to kind of watch what numbers are. But the bigger one would be similar to when we re-signed Jonathan Allen and or we talked about re-signing it and Jack came on and said, you know, he was number three either among all defensive linemen in, in percentage of pressures on the quarterback. Yeah. You know, so that like that to me is a even bigger stat than did you – finalize the play is are you making an impact on the play right. and that could be something where hey we've got four guys there that can get to the quarterback so if if to throw out there hey chase you better give me 10 sacks or else we're not going to sign you well what if he's putting enough pressure that somebody else is eaten because of it That's you true. know so is it you know could impact plays could be just as effective you know right. or is or is his pressure forcing the quarterback to throw early and Forbes is getting interceptions, exactly. you know? So it, it's exactly. kind of, it, I'm kind of throwing a whole lot of like stuff that we may not be able to, to, um, to have good numbers around. But so I think it, it's more about, is he making an impact again, the way he did in 2020? Um, is he coachable? He yeah. was not huh. in 2021, huh. you know, those eight games before he got hurt, he was not being coachable. He was doing his own thing. He was doing the LeVar Arrington stuff out there. Yeah. That Greg Williams was like, get out of here. I don't need this. Um, and then finally, he's got to show that he can be healthy. He's got to play in over about 14 games. Show that, you know, it's one thing to get nicked up here and there, you know, not knee related, that type of stuff. But he's got to be able to say like, hey, you are back. You can be healthy for us to consider – extending you and keeping you on board for a little bit longer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, in, in this league, we know the best avail ability is availability. And whether we like it or not, it, it's what have you done for me lately? You know what I mean? We know how great he was in college. We know what that first year was like. But since the injury, it's been a lot of questioning. I can't yeah. sit here and vouch for you if I can't, if I haven't seen you play. And when I do see you play, it's, uh, you know, so – Game time, when everything gets strapped up, we will see. Uh, hopefully he's back, though. Yeah, I mean, if, if he's if he's back, I mean, if he's if he provides what he did in 2020, 2020 I mean, those four linemen, I mean, that, that defense is going to be nuts. Right. It was good right. last year, but they were not – you know, it was good, but it wasn't great. But you got a healthy Chase Young joining those three guys that were already there. That's going to be a sick defense. And if you got these guys that are ball hawks back there and can start making some turnovers, holy smokes. Oh, yeah. Call oh, us and, the and Baltimore Ravens and let Sam Howe take us to the Super Bowl. Right? <laughs> and I, I think this – I think what Russell's saying is actually perfect. He said, I like Chase, but Sweat is a beast and a long wingspan. But yeah. more importantly, this one – his Chase's only downfall is that he goes wide and too deep into the backfield. And that is the difference. That's what you were talking about, coaching. about him not being coaching, right, and not being coached. One of the things that was huge when Chase was out, the reason why we were able to get so much pressure and why Deron Payne was able to succeed so much, because uh, Montez Sweat played within the scheme. If he had to push his guy up to let the other guy, to let Payne come around on a, on a, a stunt, he did that. He did what he needed to do. And sometimes he wasn't going to get all the attention. He wanted, but those are the plays that like you're talking about where he's opening up maybe something or pushing the uh, quarterback to the direction of his other guy who's coming up over there to do that. So yeah, yeah I, I love this. Uh, yeah. Johnny said sweat is a bulldog. I think chase was exposed <laughs> his rookie year. Um, I, would, I don't know if exposed. I don't know. Not, exposed. Not, not exposed. I don't think, um, we were we were a rough team there. We yeah, really I, I mean, I think I had the um, the hot take last year. I don't think we said on the show that 
the sweat was not going to be re- returned, that they were not going to sign it because after the whole like 36 sacks record, you know, break and everything, it, you could tell he wasn't fitting the scheme. He turned it around, and, and I think it's a guarantee that Sweat's going to – Cam Curl and, and Montez Sweat are going to get the next contract extensions, yeah. and the, the real only chance for Chase to stick around longer would be to be franchised next year and then work on the extension. But I I, I don't think it's a it's an either-or that they're just – Considering, I think Montez is a part of the plans, and mm-hmm. it's is Chase a part of it too, and he right. can earn it this year. Oh yeah, yeah. We we very well might have seen our starting three of at least three out of our starting four last year, where we had yeah. Montez, Duran, and Jonathan Allen, because Duran Payne and and Montez are two that we were kind of uh, iffy a couple years back. Where they, you know, we had questions about them. They've proven that they could play within the scheme, and hey, that makes a huge difference. Um, didn't want to ignore this. Candy asking, uh, do you think we're gonna go to the, make it to the Super Bowl this year? No, I'm gonna not. say that no, it's not gonna yeah. happen. Not even jokingly, it's not gonna happen. Right. But it's, I do expect to see a, a lot better product on the field, and I definitely expect us to be in that that playoff race. I mean, a year ago. <laughs> At one point, we were seven five and one, and then we obviously went oh three and one. But still, are you know? Well, we are right now. I believe um, listed at um, six and a half wins is what Vegas has us at. So I've already reached out to Jack and say, "Hey, let's go throw some money on this. I'll take the over. Let's, let's hope oh, he does." Definitely he take so, the over. He gets so scared. He won't. Jack won't ever place my bets that I give him since I can't in conservative South Carolina here. <laughs> Jeez. Yo, over. Definitely the over. Yeah. And Russell, that's yeah. That's this is it. This is all we ever want to see. Other than the name, you know, we just want to see wins. Let's see we a do. good product on the field. Yeah. Period. So yeah. and I think honestly, I think we have that. I think with E B here, I think uh new ownership, Rivera and those guys, they've got something going right now. And I I honestly I think people are fitting. We're not yeah. hearing, I mean, th- let's think about this time last year. Sam Mills the third getting fired and they bring in Jeff Zanina and people weren't okay with the Sam Mills. Like they, they had an issue with Sam Mills and we had to do that. J, JDR, Jack Del Rio had his little oh, dust up comment awesome. a year, yeah, a year ago at this time. We, I mean, and unfortunately, Brian Robinson getting shot. There was so much that went on at this time last year, you know, uh, on top of Carson Wentz being our quarterback, that it's just nice now that it seems like all of the talk all that extra stuff is behind us and we can focus on football yeah so yeah we we'll post that thing by by johnny it's <laughs> it's sure august we're... well that that's what you're supposed to be <laughs> nothing but positive vibes in august <laughs> let's go i believe <laughs> oh there's a good good question by russell um hmm. they um they are promoting the assistant is it Travell Wharton? He's going to be promoted. This is all the stuff they wouldn't, they couldn't finalize because Snyder wasn't going to pay these coaches these extensions. But basically, Juan Castillo is going to be like like a run game coordinator, basically. Yeah. And you're going to have a, a Travell Wharton is going to be the O line coach, and then they they brought someone else to be the tight ends coach to focus on that because Juan Castillo was a tight ends coach last year. Um, which is they never played tight end, so you know, yeah. not not maybe not the best fit, but I think that's kind of what I ha- I heard Ben Standig report a couple weeks ago. Um, they, they should have be announced them by now, I would think. Surprise, oh. yeah, and shout out to Johnny. I love oh, how kind, how kind, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, uh, Gary said people need to get over the name change, it's not priority. Let's be back to be back, get back to being a respectable organization and winning again, 100%. Perfect comment. Perfect yeah. comment. And we will we will uh end it on that. Let's go. <laughs> the Washington Commanders. There it is.